here's example two and if you take a look at this uh, you'll see there's something different about the data from what we've done in the past. I'll pause for a minute and let you look at it. Okay, what's the most important thing you noticed? It should be that there's only six phenotypic classes. That means two are missing and most likely those are the double recombinants because they're typically rare. Uh, the gene distances seem far enough that we should see a few of them but maybe there's a hundred percent interference. So if you have a crossover in one region for some reason you can't have a crossover in the other. So let's look at these largest numbers here. We've got sleep body and we've got um, ovalized rippled thorax. This tells us a couple other things as well. This means that the F1 females of wild type appearance and being heterozygous probably don't have all wild type alleles on the same chromosome. We know that because although the traits we're looking at are autosomal recessive and anywhere you don't see a trait mentioned you can assume it's wild type. Notice that one of them is all wild type and we have a triple mutant here and notice they're also the same magnitude of number. Um, we know that it's unlikely that one chromosome has all wild type and the other one has all recessive alleles. So take a moment and try to figure out which phenotypic class is missing. Hopefully you came up with oval and rippled sleek as your missing phenotypes. So these would be the double crossovers and, and we're going to look for an absence of those when we try to figure out our gene order. So um, and notice when I'm pausing I'm actually inviting you to hit the pause button yourself so that you can do the next step before I show it to you. So what's the next step here to figure out the gene order? Hopefully you've decided to draw Oh. I've indicated here that can we account for the double crossovers? I've, I've already done that. Uh, we're getting 100% interference or some other biological explanation for them to not show up. So they're just not represented in this data set. Maybe a crossover in one region is interfering with the enzymes that would cross over in the other region. Uh, these are in your textbook. Um, so your next step to figure out the gene order is to make gene symbols and then propose a possible order. So down here we've got um, S in the middle and we'll see if that works. Notice that the genotype here fits with one of the phenotypes that's really large. We've got oval eyes and rippled thorax and that's this number up here. Here we've got no mention of the uh, shape of the eyes or the thorax but we have a sleek body and that's what we see right here. That's how we come up with this. All of the permutations for the double crossover will reflect either parental group right there. Okay so if we run our line through the top the phenotypes that are possible from this is the triple mutant, oval, sleek, rippled, oval, sleek, rippled. Well we see that that is one of the t ones in the list. It's not one of the two that we're missing so that can't be the order. The double crossover is not represented with S in the middle. So let's try again. Let's try another order and this time let's put uh, the rippled thorax in the middle. Notice again we still have the same uh, genotype but a different order. We've got uh, oval and rippled, that's one of our large categories, and the other one is just sleek body over here. Well by organizing these uh, for a double crossover event what we have is an oval phenotype and that's not in the table. That's up here. So that tells us that this is the gene order we should use. Okay, here's a table with some data, the same data that we had before. What's the next step that you would do? Hopefully you decided to put down the possible genotypes and this is really handy so that we can compare the uh, parentals with any recombinants that might occur. And I've put in the corner the gene order just uh, for uh, orientation's sake. Remember that each of these is diploid, each has a chromosome that has all recessive alleles, that's what makes it a test cross, and so we can use the data from, from here. So I want to work from region 1 first, shown in orange, and if we look at each parental group, just looking at those two genes, just by themselves, we see that they are in coupling. Both dominants and both recessives are together. So that means wherever we see repulsion, there and there, these are going to represent a crossover in region 1, 29 and 15. So if we look at region 2, the parentals start out in repulsion. And when we look for the recombinants in that region, here and here, 
those are going to be in coupling, as you see in the graphic. So let's put a formula down. Uh, we're going to need the denominator, the total number of offspring. But if we take uh, the formula here and add 29 and 15, and by the way, those two numbers came from these two, you do the math and you find out you've got 3.6 centimorgans. If we want to find the distance from rippled to the striped thorax, do the same kind of thing, throw in the crossover for regions uh, 2, and when you run those, you're going to get 6.3 centimorgans. So the map you draw, we should have decimal points in here. Um, I'll put them in. You can see why I do these animations in advance. There are 3.6 and 6.3, and that's going to be uh, the, the proper gene map we get from this particular organism. And we can't do double crossover correction.